Hey guys! Alright guys, we're here on Monday to do one of our famous double headers. We're starting off with a band that we've checked out on the channel before, Acuvil. The last time we did these guys on the channel, I mentioned that they were from Montreal. They're not. They're from France. Oh. I mean, I, mean, I got the language, right? Yeah. <laughs> Baguette. Uh, but uh, wrong country, wrong continent. Yeah. So I, I feel enough. I feel like it was like a fifty-fifty. Yeah. I feel like it was a. Fi I, I was trying to bring them over to Canada. We need to increase the quality of our national bands. Therefore, let's import yeah. uh, a, a French band over to Montreal uh, and, and make things slightly better. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying that there's not great Canadian bands. There are. And most of them do come from Montreal. Exactly. So, but you know, the, one the more Europe, the Europe of Canada. The, the Europe of Canada. But one more is not gonna is not gonna hurt. It's yeah. just gonna make things better. Now. A couple of things I want to say before we click play. First is, I, I, want, I have a French message to those of you watching out there. Oh, God. A, a, a tout le monde, a tout mes amis, je vous aime. All right, that's, that's all I know. Okay. Uh, the other thing is, the name of the song is Komrad. So you are a big fan of, 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 of Russia. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, of all things Russian, not maybe not all things Russian. No. He's not a big fan of the KGB, but he, he's a big fan of certain Russian things. I know things. what the KGB is, though. Uh, but, uh, you know, like, he's not a big fan of Putin, but you know what I mean? Like, comrade, I figure, I figure, what, you have posters of him riding naked on his horse? Oh, on a God, bear? We need one of those. those. That's a badass picture of him with the Russian flag on top of a bear. I, I think that's photoshopped. I, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Fake news, but it doesn't matter. It's it's very it's still good, epic. It's good fake news. It's, it's still epic. All right. So the name of the song is Comrade Acuvel. Are you ready for this? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Oh, 
I guess that means comrade. So, I mean, I, I don't think that's. Uh, I'm not. I don't think I'm jumping into uh, into conclusions here. All yeah, right. I don't know where the T and the and the O come from in comrade. Well, obviously the O, but the T. All right, but. It's not like you're a linguistic specialist. You, you know, can barely that, the thing read is, in, and write in English, never mind in, in Russian. Which is true, but, you know, I really wish... what Out of all the languages in the world, Russian is one of those languages I wish I understood. Like Just not, buy a Rosetta Stone, then. Or, or not, not just Russian. All the languages that use um, words that aren't, like, words. <laughs> Klingon? Like, yeah, like what, what the fuck does that mean? Like, I mean, that's, yeah. the, that's like, the... the the most random thought that I've ever heard. No, but that came to mind. I, I like languages that use words that are not real words. Well, well there like are symbols. real words within their own well, language. They're like symbols and stuff. Oh, God. I know what you mean, but like... You know what I mean? Like Korean and, and stuff like that. The way, the way your the way mind I... tries to put the thought process into, into a logical sequence tells me all that I need to know about the fact that you don't learn languages yeah i mean you have a whole summer there's no concerts there's no life there's nothing happening buy a couple of rosetta stones and go at it do something do something with your life or like my mother used to say do something down your legs she says in portuguese kind of made more sense it but probably it, does a, anyhow because in english it doesn't sound that right it doesn't sound right but anyways l l let's uh let's get into this song let's get into this video before we talk about the song i want to mention a couple of things about the video now if, assuming this is a KGB session where they're doing like interrogation there, the guy that they're interrogating looks like Steve Wilkos from uh, the, Larry, uh, the Jerry Springer show. Uh, j just a younger version of that guy. But he, he didn't look impressed. And, and that's perhaps one of the most, uh, what I was going to say, one of the most soft KGB interrogations ever. Yeah. Ever. I mean, the only thing that kind of reminded me of KGB specifically during the Cold War is those old tapes recording the conversation. Outside of that, I was expecting some waterboarding, some anal probing, oh, oh, like, I, I don't know, some, I was expecting anything, but that, that no, really having, lame, yeah, really having, lame interrogation. They were having just like a talk and then the other guy started yelling at they, him. They not even had good KGB versus bad, bad KGB. Yeah, I there mean, was no good cop, that. bad cop. Yeah, there was, no, there was no, none of that stuff. I'm expecting the KGB dude to grab the guy by the head, there's no hair, but grab him by the head and just smash him onto the table. And then when good KGB guy walks in and says, what happened to his face? And, and then you say, well, you know, uh, allergies. He tripped. Allergies, or he tripped, whatever. He was eating some pineapple. Or they're sitting right next to each other, he smashes the head, and then he goes to clean off the blood. Oh, you're okay, you're okay. And then and smacks then, him again. And then smacks him again. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I feel like good cop, bad cop in Russia, they're just both bad cops, just one is nice about it. I, I was just going to... One is less, slightly less slightly violent than the less other. Slightly violent cop. So, I, I, I just felt like this was a little bit... I, I don't know. It was a little bit soft. For a song uh, that's, that's... That's not soft. Th that's not soft, named Comrade... I mean, I was expecting a little bit more violence during that uh, interrogation. I mean, I was expecting to, to be like, like grab the recording device and slam it on the fucking dude. Just like, I don't know. I, 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 expecting I more. I was expecting more. Just putting that out there. Now, once it gets to the song, what, what did you think about? So since I started with the video, now I'm, I'm, I'm moving over to you. Uh, what did you think about the track? The, the track the track was... by the way very different sounding track from the one that we did where they were frolicking around and then they took the dude into the into the cabin and then they had their way with the guy well they didn't have their way they almost had their way with the guy but they killed him it was like the worst threesome in the history of threesomes exactly. but anyways so this song felt a little bit different for a little bit of a departure from that sound but I want I want to get your take on it yeah because this one had a little bit I don't know how to explain it but this one especially in the chorus with the melody in the chorus, um, the, the guitar and the chorus really added this kind of uh, creep, not creepy, but like... a little bit of a gent vibe. Yeah. Which, but, which I felt was a little bit outside the box. Not that I didn't like it. I just felt like it was the, a little bit outside the, the box. In the chorus itself, it did feel like, um, like something bad was happening. It had that type of feeling of, of not creepy, but more like an intense... Sinister? Sinister. Perfect. Sinister. That's what, that's what it kind of had. And then the bends throughout the whole... Oh, song. that was incredible. I really enjoyed that. Though. I was really enjoying the bends. They happened a lot, which I think... But it didn't get boring. At least to me, it didn't get boring. It didn't get boring, but it was more predictable. 
Uh, so it, well, it, after a while, you kind of knew when. Yeah, they were I lost coming. the flavor of how the bends uh, were at the start. Like when I, you mm -hmm. know, first time that you, you first you time heard getting it. them, they're really really good because I really like the sound of them as they went along. Still, were really good. It's just that they weren't surprising me anymore. They were just kind of there. I know, but it was an integral part of the song. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I thought that was interesting. I thought the, the more gent vibes that they added to some parts of the song was really a little bit outside the box for a song that that has a nice tempo that has heaviness to it adding something that kind of uh goes against the grain yeah made you kind of like sit back a little bit and like whoa what's that yeah still slowing down a little bit in the chorus yeah and, and making the making the song melodic yeah. uh, with a different kind of melody not that the song was not melodic but it just gives a different kind of melody one thing that i felt was a little bit outside the box that i didn't see it coming in a million years was the children's choir yeah i was like it, it didn't like it, Sorry to disappoint those of you that were expecting a no face during the children's choir, but like it's a children's choir. I mean, it's surprising, but it's not like it's the one word you know in French too. Uh, yeah, it's, it's it, one it, of the it, one of the words. It, it's it's not like the guitar player showed up with his dick sticking out. That would make me go like, what the what fuck? The f like that that definitely Hold would on. give me a, a no face. But, okay, yeah, yeah. But a children's choir is like, wow, that's. I'm perhaps doing the O face internally. Like in my brain, I'm like, whoa, children's choir. I was not expecting that. Yeah, you see, the, I saw all like the blood. And this was obviously like a murder investigation type thing. And I was half expecting. The like, children, I think, with, were spirits. was not like real children. Yeah, but I was like, half expecting like a priest to just walk by. Oh, that would have been. Uh, that probably would have made me get the O face. Uh, that but they would have been, been so mailed in. I mean, like. The priest gets such a bad rep. Not that they don't deserve it. Exactly. I, I mean, it's it's a stereotype that's there for a reason. Lot, They've kind of paved yeah, their, you know, the way. A lot of people are mad about stereotypes, but the thing is, stereotypes They are, exist for a reason. They're, they're there for a reason. I mean, there's no stereotype about Portuguese people having huge dicks. There's a reason for that. I can attest to it. So, you know what I mean? So, it is what it is. Just, zero. Just, just embrace it. Yeah. Just make it your own. Because once you make it your own... You take away the power from said stereotype. Yeah, it's, it's like it's like if it, you make fun of it, then no one making fun of you with that stereotype will really have an impact on you. It, it's like the word tuga. When I was growing up, the worst thing you could call a Portuguese person was tuga. Now Portuguese people, we took it on. We made it our own word. It's like our N word. We brought it over to us, and it's our own word. Now we use that word all the time. We use it in advertisement. We use it to talk about the national team. We call we, we call each other by that word. When I was a kid, when I was like 10, 12, if somebody called me that, oh man, those were fighting words. So the evolution, the evolution it just goes to show that the best way to diffuse a word that has horrible connotation to it is by taking it back and making it kind of... I mean, there's certain words that you cannot do it. Yeah. Like, I'm thinking of pedophile, for example. There's no way pedophiles can take that word back and make it good somehow. We're taking pedophilia <laughs> back. It's just, it's just, it's not going to work. But, you know, I, I think with stereotypes, sometimes the best way to diffuse them is take them back to, like, well, obviously, the only people that can take it back are the people affected by said stereotype. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't come from the outside and take it back. There's no no backs, There's, some there's no backsy takesies. There's, there's some of those things you don't want to take back because some of those things are... Are different. Uh, yeah, but I think for the most part, you got to take it and make it your own. So yeah. I don't even know how we got on this conversation. But anyways, about the children. About the children. Yeah, it's like the, the Wu Tang. The it's, 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 you know, it's the, all it's all about the children. Just like <laughs> just like the Wu Tang. Uh, so I, I I think the children were re represented like spirits. I don't. I think that's kind of the yeah, vibe I that I got. Really and and almost like her spirit is like the 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 spirit of death welcoming those others the, the, those kids in. But I thought the children's choir was really interesting because. It, it felt a little bit outside the box, and you still yeah. had the harsh vocals behind them. So you didn't really, you didn't really get that much. You got it, but it wasn't like um... it, it was. It was like it worked well because they, they were at, when they started, they were in the forefront. But then when the harsh vocals come back, they went back into the. They went back. It became into, more of a humming. It became almost part of the atmosphere of the song. I thought it was interesting because it kind of changed the track a little bit. It gave. A different. This is a song that kind of throws you a couple of curveballs here and there. It's not very linear in terms of oh, once you get the first half of it, there's no more surprises. It seems to always have a surprise around the corner. Yeah. I, I like this track. I like the guitars on this track. I like the sound of this song, and I, I like the consistency from her voice. She has like these really deep gutturals that just don't go away. Like yeah. it's, it's just super consistent. Yeah. Uh, and she has the look for them as well. It's not like it's not that. like you look at her and when she sings, you're kind of surprised by what's coming out of her. She has the look she, that matches. She's got the look down. Yeah, she's got the look that matches 
what, what, the style of vocal approach that she has. This is a band, I, I, I'm saying this right now, this is a band that deserves a lot of attention, a lot of credit, and I hope they go places. I really do. And one of those places that I hope they go to is Toronto to play a show so we can we can go see them. Oh, so. You know, we go to Montreal sometimes. They're from. We already. Uh, uh, we already got to the oh, point yeah, that they're, they're not France. from Montreal. They're from France. France. They're from France. Yeah. Which, by the way, they ha they have the Arc du Triomphe, but they never won anything. Like I, I, I don't, I don't get that. Like, what are, you, what kind of triumph are you celebrating? Anyways, that, that's. I, I just cup. pissed off all of our. Yeah, but I think, but the, but the arch was built way before they ever won a hey. World Cup. I think it had to do with something else. They were ahead of the times. Oh, they knew they were going to win. They so knew they like, were going to win, and then they were like, yeah. So the name, what's the name of that guy that, that predicts the future? Nostradamus. Nostradamus. He's so, French, I think. I think Nostradamus is French. I don't know. It kind of sounds French, but I, I'm, I'm going to go with it. I mean, I thought these guys were from Montreal, so what do I know? Exactly. So so you're saying Nostradamus predicted that they were going to win the World Cup. Exactly. Uh, and then win the Euro, Euro and World Cup back-to-back, -back, and that's why they built that ahead of time to celebrate it? Is, yeah, is that, is that but kind they didn't of win the Euro. Go? They did win a Euro. Well, they didn't win the... Oh, you're talking about the... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah back when Zidane was there. Yeah, yeah, I thought you were talking about the recent World Cup. No, back no, when no. Zidane was there. Well, not the recent one. The recent one, Portugal showed them in their own house who's the boss. Yeah. We went Tony Danza on we, France. We squealed France. our way through, and we got there. Come on, that goal was was one of the greatest goals in the history of modern football. And now he plays for Lokomotiv Moscow. And nobody knows what the fuck that he's doing. Besides, well, I mean, you do, uh, you do, but exactly. Like, not even his parents answer his calls anymore. He's a nobody. He's not like, a nobody. He's. I mean, he's enshrined in in, in the in the in the Portuguese Hall football of Hall of Fame like, for that one moment in time. Hey, but without him, that moment would have never happened. Forever, ever. <laughs> forever and there I will get a tattoo forever please and don't there. please don't all right on that note guys this is it for this first video don't go anywhere there's gonna be another video coming right after see ya see ya